Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Signal, all right. Um, so I'm Dan Hunter, and I like to cross-dress. Oops, oh no, sorry, that's my real uh, secret. Um, okay. So apparently, according to my secret here, I like to, uh, I met my lover or lovers in a chat room. Okay, so uh, I um, am a lawyer. I teach uh, internet related stuff at a business school. Hello, please work, all right. Um, and um, so my interest here, the, the very brief thing that I'm gonna try to do in the time that ordinarily it would take me to clean my throat is to talk a little bit about virtual economies and uh, virtual work, uh, focusing upon uh, these virtual worlds, which has been the, the topic of conversation in this, in this first panel. Someone asked a question in the back channel, why is this all about games? Um, so one of the reasons I think is that Liz has kind of structured it thematically that this first session is, is about games from all of the people that she hangs out with too much in World of Warcraft. But uh, also part of it, I mean, my interest in this is that, um, oh, sh shit. Um, uh, is my interest in this uh, is uh, in uh, computer incompatibility. God damn. Uh, in any event, at least you, you don't have the cool slides to go along with it, but at least you have the... Uh, yeah, 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 you say. Well, in any event, we missed the, we missed the first one. All right, so... Um, uh, this was a, it was a cool, really cool slide. Um, so um, a virtual world is an online communication space, a, a blank space actually in this case, for multiple people with physical embodiment, state persistence, and scarcity characteristics. And um, the reason why uh, I'm interested in virtual worlds as opposed to just online communities in general is because of some of these aspects which you don't find typically in other online communities or at least are not as obvious as other online communities. Thank you for taking a photograph to show my shame. Um, uh, what a technical noob. If only I brought the Mac up like Nick. Um, the, um, uh, the point about this is that it's the, the, the world state persistence and the scarcity characteristics which tends to lead to these two interesting uh, developments which we've seen really emerge over the last few years, which you typically don't see in other online communities. People can correct me if you, if you think that's wrong, but you certainly see it very uh, readily within the games uh, environments because of uh, exogenous factors like particular uh, need for certain things under conditions of, of scarcity. Uh, so resource scarcity uh, generates uh, economies uh, and property. As a consequence, this particular photograph is a, is a night elf mining, which uh, uh, those who are in the know would realize is uh, one of the, the best contraceptives um, that, that young men across the country are uh, actually not having sex with uh, the girlfriends uh, because their night elf is mining. But the thing about this particular uh, node here, right, this resource node, is that once the night elf actually uh, finishes mining it out, it's, it's gone, right? And that's just one of the characteristics of resource scarcity. It's not the only characteristic of resource scarcity in these worlds. There are lots and lots, but scarcity generates economies and also scarce, scarcity generates property. The property in this case is real, we, as much as we might uh, regret that fact. These kilt shorts uh, from, from one of the early incarnations of there uh, is, is real in all of the meaningful senses of the word, right? That is to say that, that uh, you know, I can, I can go through this in chapter and verse if you want, but I can demonstrate to you that all of the necessary conditions, both descriptively and normatively, for the presence of property in any of the things that you look around in this, in this particular, you know, real world right now, are present also in, in the virtual world environment. Okay, it, just take it from me, legally it does satisfy the conditions of property, right? None of the things that you think of as property in the physical world are actually property. Those are simply the physical things in which property uh, is, is imbued because property is an abstract concept which is generated as a fiction by law and it turns out that all of the characteristics which exist in, in law for real world property actually exist in this. So the property is real. What that means is that the economy then becomes real. This is not a picture of uh, Damien uh, Omen 5 or whatever we're up to now, but in fact is a picture of, well, it's fairly close, Brock Pierce, the brains behind IGE, Internet Gaming Entertainment, which now essentially uh, provides for all of the secondary marketplaces in all of the game worlds 
uh, to the value. He, this is when he was in a, a child actor, uh, for those who don't know. He's in a Disney movie called First Kid. He was the, the, the president's son. Uh, he's much more powerful now than uh, the president's child. Um, he's taken over, he and, and IG have taken over a vast number of, uh, of the, the various secondary marketplaces amongst some other things um, and are generating a huge amount of money in the secondary market where you're buying in the real world with real world dollars uh, things that this, this property which, which you might have thought of as, as not existing but in fact really does. Um, estimates range up to a billion dollars um, in that secondary marketplace. It's clearly the case that the internal economy the churn within the internal economies for all of the virtual worlds exceeds at least $20 billion. Okay? So the economies are real, the property is real, and because of this, and because of exchange rate and wage arbitrage possibilities, you actually see the emergence of globalized work in these, in these spaces. So in fact, these worlds are actually the future of certain types of work, what we think of as outsourcing, are actually operating within these worlds right now. This is a picture courtesy of, of Nick. Um, the second last bar here indicates Joey Ito as the, the most uh, number of hours logged of any person, but the, 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 far, um, the, the far right for you uh, is, uh, uh, we can demonstrate fairly readily, Chinese gold farmers as they're called. Um, I've done, I'm doing a study at the moment with, the Chinese, uh, with some Chinese research assistants who are contacting them. This is some of the demographic information that we've gathered from talking to them, and we will shortly be going and speaking with them. They uh, don't have many other prospects. Some of them are doing this uh, full-time. Some of them are doing it part-time. Um, but uh, they're being paid about 125 a month uh, for seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Um, and the virtual sweatshop is usually in a smaller city. Uh, there are certain structural characteristics that mean they have to be run by entrepreneurs who provide intermediary functions, and I can talk about that. They typically have a target of about 300 gold a, an hour. And I now am finishing, absolutely last slide. There are other implications, including stigmatization of particular types of uh, characters. This particular slide, courtesy of Constance, who's done a wonderful study about the stigmatization of Chinese gold farmers in certain places. I'm sorry, Liz. <clears throat> Thank you.